confidence intervals. When you're estimating the mean mu of a population from a sample, then it's useful to be able to give an estimate of that um, mean as the sample mean, but it's, it's even more useful if we can give an interval which we can be reasonably certain um, accurately contains that population mean. So rather than just giving the sample mean, we can give um, a, a small interval of where we expect that, that mean to lie between. So a 95% confidence interval means that for 100 confidence intervals where we write it like this um, in brackets a, b, or most often we'll see those as square brackets, um, we can say that if we constructed 100 of these confidence intervals, 95 of them would contain the real population mean of mu. This is not quite the same as saying we're 95% confident that the mean lies within this range. What we're saying is if we take 100 samples and we construct this confidence interval, then we can say that um, 95 of them would accurately tell us that um, the mean lies within this range that we've calculated. So what this looks like is we're saying that the probability that the, the real population mean lies between these two numbers that we've calculated of A and B is 0 0.95. This is much easier to see in practice, so I'll show you how this actually gets put together. So let's start with X being a normal distribution with a mean of mu and a variance of sigma squared. Then we also know that X bar follows a normal distribution, we've seen that before. So um, we have this normal curve, and this section in the middle is going to represent 95%. I'm going to show you this through with a 95% confidence interval, and then show you how to adapt it for other levels. So we have this Z value here, where the probability that Z is smaller than this, this little value of Z on the graph is 0.975, because if, if there's 95% in the middle, we'd have 2.5% on either side of that, giving a value of 97.5%. Um, so if we use our normal tables to work backwards from that, we find the inverse phi of 0.975 and we get 1.96. So that value there of z is 1.96, and over here we'd have a minus 1.96. So the probability that uh, z is between minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 is 0 0.95, just straight from the normal tables. So how do we translate this into x values? We use our normal um, way that we standardize x into z, but we use it backwards. So um, z is the same as saying x bar minus mu over sigma over root 10 and then rearrange that so we've just got mu in the middle. So we'll multiply by sigma over root n, and then um, we will uh, subtract that from um, x or add it on according to uh, whichever one we need for the minus 1.96 or the 1.96. Okay, so now the probability that mu lies between those two values is 95%. So now we can say that our 95% confidence interval for this um, data looks like this. Now what about for 90% and 99% or other sorts of percentages that you might want to find? Now I've picked 90 and 99 because they're ones that come up quite often um, and they um, are represented on your normal table at the bottom. There's a little strip called critical values and it's easy reference to be able to look up some of these ones that are asked for frequently. Now all this would change is this number here, the, the value of the, the curve that you're looking at, whether you're, you're wanting 95% under that curve or 90% or 99, you just adjust it accordingly. So it would also change this uh, value for Z, which then gets changed all the way through and you apply it in the same way, you'll just have a different number everywhere that's underlined in orange. Okay, now, um, what about if X is not normal? If n is bigger than 30, if our sample size is bigger than 30, then we can use the central limit theorem. Um, you've seen this already, and then we just continue as normal, the same as you've just seen. And 
Also, um, we might get the situation where sigma squared is not known. Um, and I've, you've just seen that on the previous slide, we need to know sigma to be able to work out our confidence interval. So in that situation, again, if n is bigger than 30, then we can use s squared as an unbiased estimate for sigma squared. Um, the unbiased estimate is what you practiced in the uh, previous section. So let's see how we actually put these into um, practice. So, x is the length of nails produced by a machine. x follows a normal distribution with mean mu and variance 0.7 squared. We're going to take a random sample of five nails and it has the following lengths. We want to first of all find the 95% confidence interval for mu to one decimal place. So, we first of all need to know what x bar is from our sample. So this is our sample mean. So uh, that would be add them all up and divide by 5. So now the confidence interval will be constructed as follows. We've got 106.65 as, as the x bar value. 1.96 is our z value for 95% confidence interval. And then taking um, sigma as 0.7 and then over root 10 which is root 5 and then copy that across but this time a plus instead of a minus. When you work that out you get 106.0 and 107.3. Now part B says 200 random samples of 5 nails are taken and the 95% confidence interval is calculated. Find the expected number of intervals that do not contain mu. So if you repeated that first part 200 times you take uh, a sample of five every time and you work out a confidence interval from that sample, you do that 200 times over, how many of those would you expect to give an interval that does not contain mu? Now think back to the definition of what a confidence interval is. If it's 95% it tells us that 95 out of 100 of those confidence intervals will contain the mean. So if we're doing this for 200, then this means 5% won't contain the mean, so 5% of 200 gives us 10. 10 of those confidence intervals will not contain the real population mean. Okay, next example. We've got x following this normal distribution. 10 measurements of x are taken and we get the sum of x is 11.37. Find a 99.5% confidence interval for the mean of the population mu. So here we go with 99.5% there. That means our little bit there is 0.25%. So we're looking for the inverse phi of 0.9975 and that gives us 2.807 as our z value. So the confidence interval limit, so we need to do 11.37 over 10 to get the sample mean, then it'll be plus or minus 2.807 and then sigma over root 10. So it now looks like this. Okay, part B. How many measurements would be required to reduce the width of this interval to at most 0.03? So the width of the interval comes from this part just here. It's um, the bit that we add on or take away from the sample mean. So that's the bit that determines how wide the interval is. Um, so we will get that 2.807 and the 0.05 over root n. It's root n because we don't know how many measurements we're taking to make this work. That's going to be doubled so that we've got the full width, not just from the mean to the upper limit or the mean to the lower limit, and that has to be less than 0.03. Follow that through, and you get we need that we need a sample size that is at least 88. Okay, last example. The lifetimes T um, of these 100 energy plus light bulbs was recorded and the data summarized. We want to find a 99% confidence interval for the mean lifetime of energy plus light bulbs. So since um, n is bigger than 30, we can use the central limit theorem. We don't actually know what the distribution for t is. It might be normal, it might not. Um, but since the sample is large enough, then we can assume by the confident, uh, sorry, the central limit theorem that um, the uh, mean is normally distributed. Okay, so for following on from there, the sample mean is 105. We're going to use s squared as our unbiased estimate because we don't know um, sigma for the population. So we can use uh, the sample 
um, the unbiased estimate of the uh, variance from the sample to, to uh, use in our calculations. And that looks like this. So we get S is 78.49 by square rooting that. Now for the confidence interval, we want a 99% one. That gives our little bit there on the end as 0.5%. So do the inverse phi of that and we will get 2.576. Now our um, confidence interval, we take our t-bar, which is the 105, the sample mean, plus or minus our z value times by the unbiased estimate of sigma all over root n, which gives us our confidence interval of 85 to 125 to the nearest hour.